So I've sprayed this queen size bed down with white lining. This is white lining right here. It comes in this jar. I've sprayed it down and I've given a good, good wipe down. One wipe down, this is what I got. It had no nicotine smell to it at all when I bought it. As soon as I put white lining on it, it started to break through. I could smell nicotine. So this is what nicotine looks like. This is an Ashley bed, so a good quality bed, but it's got a nicotine smell. So I'm definitely gonna be priming it with Boss, which is blocks odors, stops stains and bleed through. So the blocking odor part, that's the nicotine part. So I'm gonna go and do a second wipe down now. This is wipe down number two. It's definitely better. Got rid of that nicotine off the top. And I don't usually wipe down the back of pieces, but I'm gonna spray down the back of this piece as well so that I can try to eliminate. I don't want any nicotine odor coming from this bed at all. This is Boss, my favorite primer. This is Boss Gray. It comes in clear and white and gray. There's different e reasons that you would use each color. Um, any of them work, but they have different benefits um, to your project specifically. This piece is going to be gray, so I'm using gray. However, I use gray on almost all of it. Okay, this is why you stir your boss. So I shook it and a long time, but you see what's in the bottom. So as this settles, you know, after it's packaged, and it's shipped and then it's sat on my shelf for a while. It has clumpies uh, down in the bottom. And those are your, can be your binding properties, your leveling properties, uh, your adhesives are down in here. They'll, they'll stir out. So you just gotta get down in there and stir, stir, stir. Keep pulling it up to the surface and just keep working it and get it all stirred out and it will be just the way you need it to be and work perfectly for your project. All right, I've got this piece, all the details are brushed. Um, I'm doing just the headboard, not the footboard right now. And now I am using my roller with Gray Boss just to cover a lot. It's great to use a roller on large flat surfaces. Your other option is to use a brush. You can do that as well, which I've done for years. And you can also use a sprayer. Sprayers work really well for large pieces, flat or detailed. Um, I have a sprayer. I'm not, I don't like to spray that often, um, but I think it might be the type of sprayer that I have. I'm actually in the market for a new sprayer. So I'll keep you posted on that. But for now, a roller gives you, actually gives you a spray look as well. And that's really easy. I prefer the small rollers just like this over the large rollers. So that's one coat of boss. Um, I usually stop here unless it's going to be a, a really bad bleeder and I don't believe that this piece is. However, um, if you have any type of odor that you're trying to cover, you really do need to do two coats of boss in order to, to do it justice. So, uh, I'm going to let this dry for about two hours and I'll come back and put my second coat on. And as soon as that's dry to touch, I'm able to start painting. So I did a little example here of different tools that you can use to apply paint to large flat surfaces. The top row I did right here with my flat medium brush, which is pretty good coverage. It's just gonna leave you some brush strokes. The second row I did with my blue application sponge, which a lot of people like, um, but it does go on. It leaves no brush strokes, but it goes on pretty thin and you will have to do a second, maybe even a third coat. The third row I did with my white finishing sponge, or application sponge from Dixie Belle as well. Um, really nice smooth coat there right here, but it also goes in thin and you for sure would have to do a second coat. And then this last row in this whole section, I did with a roller and that is one coat of Hurricane Gray. The rest of this area up here, I'm gonna use a brush because it's inset and it's a little bit harder to get 
uh, a roller inside those areas. So here we go, one coat going over um, the other applications, doing just like this. And you can see that within just a few minutes, maybe three, four minutes at the absolute most, I will have a single coat done on this and I can move right on with the rest of my project. I'm gonna use the um, new Damascus stencil by Dixie Bell that just came out. And I'm gonna use just a couple of pieces of tape here. I usually stick the pieces of tape to my clothing and pull them off. That just uh, puts a little bit of fuzz on the tape so it's not quite so sticky, just sticky enough to hold it, but not to pull your tape out. Now, I normally use my Besting, my Besting brush, um, my Besting wax brush to stencil, but because this is such a large flat surface, I'm actually gonna use my roller. You just wanna make sure your roller is really dry. Just a light roll, not a lot of pressure. call this a tone on tone. It's two grays, one on top of the other. And there you go. <laughs> That's how it looks. I like it. I wanted a little bit of a variegated look, which is how, why I usually use my best hang wax brush. Um, but this way, if you just kind of go over it in different directions, a little bit of different pressure on each side, you get this nice and variegated look. So now I've just matched up my pattern. Just match up one damask next to the other. I've taped it in place. I'm going to take my roller and I'm just going to keep moving until the whole surface is covered. Sometimes when you're stenciling, <clears throat> your stencil won't line up exactly right or maybe you um, didn't do it exactly right. And you'll find a little space or a little gap. So when you're done, it's not a big deal. Just get a little artist brush like this, put a little bit of the paint on it. And let me bring you in here and show you what I'm talking about. So do you see where this line is left here in the middle. Can you see this line? Just take your artist brush and just kind of tap it and fill it in. Now it doesn't look exactly the same, so I just take my finger and I just kind of smudge it. There's not really much of a line over here, but I'm gonna tap that in anyway. It's all variegated and a little bit different, and that's it. Okay, so my bat is stenciled, and now I wanna add some colored highlight into this each crevice line. And I'm gonna do that with Plum Crazy, which is a really deep, deep pink with a little bit of a purple undertone. I'm using a small watercolor brush just like this. And I have my spritzer bottle. So I spritz ahead of time, anywhere the area that I'm gonna be covering. I've got my La Petite brush that I'm gonna blend this out with. I take my watercolor, brush I have my plum crazy on there i'm just going to run it right on this line just deep in that line like that it's a little bit dry i'm going to wet that a little bit wet it a little bit more over here and then you take your la petite brush and you just run it over this area like this just to sort of smooth that out now there is an area that i got some on this gray that i don't really want it's not a big deal i've got a baby wipe i just come back and brush over it now i may decide later that i want more than this and that's okay, but it's better to start with a little bit and come back and add more as you go. I've taken Plum Crazy and mixed it about um, probably 50-50 with water and Plum Crazy. And I've made just a wash right here. And I'm gonna wash this Hurricane Gray mold with the Plum Crazy and wipe it back. And it's gonna give me this look right here. See the difference?
So I've heated up the wood again. Let me show you. These big, chunky, thick molds are now quite pliable. Just heating them up so I can apply glue to the back and press them up against the headboard so that they get really, really good suction up against the headboard. It does a lot better if you heat them up first and not trying to put the, the hard mold onto the bed itself.